Well, two stories have, were sent to me today, I believe, or have direct, or will have direct prophetic implications uh, in the near future. But uh, here's the first one from the Times of Israel. It's PM, uh, which is talking about Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu post-war reality could lead to new diplomatic initiative. The subheading says Netanyahu urges Abbas to choose peace with Israel over unity pact with Hamas, seeing he hopes, or saying he hopes for a PA Hamas divorce. This is what the article says. It says Operation Protective Edge has uh, brought with it a diplomatic opportunity, said Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Friday. There is now reality that allows us to act according to our security interests on one hand and on the other hand start a new responsible diplomatic initiative based on the, this new reality, he told Israel's Channel 10. Netanyahu said that he hoped following Hamas's behavior during the 51-day conflict and the Shin Bet revelation earlier this month of a Hamas plot to overthrow the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank that uh, PA President Mahmoud Abbas would now be able to see Hamas's true colors and uh, sever ties with the Islamist group. Abbas understands that this gang, Hamas, was plotting his overthrow and we, and we thorped it. Uh, said Netanyahu, adding that he could only hope Abbas would hand uh, Hamas a uh, get or a divorce in, in the Hebrew. Netanyahu said he hoped Abbas would choose Israel over a unity government with Hamas and suggested that if this were the case, he would be willing to pursue a peace deal in talks with the PA. I think Abbas understands today that he must uh, choose between a Hamas that doesn't only call for Israel's destruction it also called for his overthrow and in fact acted on it. I hope that we can cooperate with the, uh, him on a diplomatic process, said Netanyahu in the Channel 10 re, uh, interview, an excerpt of which was uh, aired Friday. The Shin Bet said it arrested more than 90 Hamas operatives in May and June, confiscated dozens of weapons that had been smuggled into the West Bank and seized more than $170,000 aimed at funding attacks. It produced photos of confiscated weapons and cash and a flowchart of the Hamas operatives who had been questioned and said they planned a series of massive attacks on Israeli targets, including the Temple Mount, in order to start a widespread conflagration. Israeli Defense Minister Moshe uh, Yalon uh, also remarked in a Channel 2 interview Friday that if it weren't for the IDF and Shin Bet, Abbas wouldn't survive. Earlier Friday, Hamas, or Abbas ag accused Hamas of needlessly extending the fighting in the Gaza Strip over the past two months, causing a high death toll. In the interview with Palestine, Palestine TV, uh, Abbas questioned the future of the unity government, government with the terror group. A senior official in the PA also told the Times of Israel that Hamas is preventing the uh, PA from returning to the Gaza Strip. He said that despite declarations by Hamas that it would cooperate with the PA to rebuild the Gaza Strip, it's so far, uh, it's so far preventing it from doing so. On Thursday, two days after the ceasefire went into effect, Netanyahu said Israel would back the Palestinian Authority's efforts to return to a governing position in the Gaza Strip. We would be happy if Abbas's forces would enter Gaza, he said. According to a, a report in a Jordanian paper Thursday, Netanyahu and Abbas met secretly in Amman uh, several days ago to discuss the ceasefire with Hamas, offering no further details. Now what does this all mean? Well, it means that the distrust of Hamas by uh, the Fatah terrorist group, or should I call it Abbas's West Bank group, is very distrustful of a Hamas terrorist group. Frankly, I cannot see how this unity government will stand, especially after reports that Hamas was planning to take over and probably the assassination of Mr. Abbas. So with that hanging over Mr. Abbas's head, I can't imagine that he would want to maintain this unity government of Gaza and the West Bank. And if he has any sense whatsoever, I would assume that he would want to pursue a peace deal of some sort with uh, Israel, because that's what they're offering right now. And much of the Arab world did back the, uh, the uh, Israeli operation to uh, destroy Hamas. So we might be looking at the opening phase of a possible 
agreement with uh, the West Bank and uh, the Arab, modern Arab, Arab world, with the uh, Gaza looking on the outside still remaining to be isolated. Because they certainly they didn't, they didn't really gain that much from uh, their war with Israel, but uh, you know, I have a feeling that this ceasefire is going to be broken again because I, don't, I can't even imagine that Israel is going to allow Gaza to have an airport, nor are they going to allow them to have a seaport. And even if that is the case, uh, as the Hamas leaders have said, that this is the last uh, war with Israel. So why in the world would Israel want to hand them an airport or a seaport just to bring in more illegal weapons and supplies? But certainly this is something that I would keep my eye on because we may be looking at the beginning stages of an agreement that may come to pass. Now, of course, it probably will not come to pass until after the rapture of the church and the uh, Antichrist arises because it will be through him that peace will come. Or should I say that he will make strong a covenant, whatever that covenant may be. No one really has been able to define what that is going to be, whether it will be a seven-year ceasefire with Hamas that is piggybacked with the uh, creation of a Palestinian state and the uh, normalization of relationships with uh, uh, the modern Arab world. And here is another article that I think plays right in with this that uh, I think will very well play a part in this seven-year uh, pact or co covenant that uh, will come. And this is an article from The Telegraph, and the title is, and t it says that to fight ISIL and its genocidal agenda, we need a global coalition, says John Kerry. And the subheading says the U.S. Secretary of State's comments uh, come as Saudi Arabia urged international action to fight terrorism and Iraqi forces plan offensive to free Iraqi town of Amirli. And I'm going to start reading right about uh, halfway down the article. It says, John Kerry, the U.S. Secretary of State, called for the formation of a global coalition as King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia separately urged rapid international action against ISIL. You know, I had a comment a couple of weeks ago. Someone said that, uh, you know, I had indicated that there was no major country that was supporting ISIL, but they were self-supporting. Uh, Someone wrote in a comment that uh, Saudi Arabia was one of the countries that was supporting them. Well, right here, this article says that Saudi Arabia is calling for an international coalition to put them down. So I think we can rule them out. Ms. Kerry said uh, military action was not enough in a piece for the New York Times. What's happened, or what's, what's needed to confront ISIL's vision and genocidal agenda is the, a global coalition using political, humanitarian, economic, law enforcement, and uh, in intelligence tools to support military force. And this is something that I said would, would basically take place. I think that you're going to have the United States and the West coming back into the Middle East, leading an international force uh, that will be also that will involve uh, Arab and Islamic fighters to put down this uh, Islamic State once and for all. Such a coalition would, ha would likely have to include Iran, uh, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and the Gulf countries, which, plagued by diplomatic rivalries between themselves, make unlikely bedfellows. It is no secret to you what ISIL have done and what they have yet to do, King Abdullah said. Uh, I ask you to transmit this message to your leaders. Fight terrorism with force, reason, and speed. And certainly Mr. Obama has been uh, criticized because he indicated that uh, we had no plan yet, but there goes on to say America is to put forward an action plan at a summit of the United Nations Security Council next month when Washington will hold the group's rotating presidency. Meanwhile, Mr. Kerry and Chuck Hagel, the uh, U.S. Secretary of Defense, will rally support for a coalition, first with European leaders on the sidelines of the NATO summit meeting in Wales and then in the Middle East. The rise of ISIL is reshaping politics in the Middle East uh, as countries that had been uh, at loggerheads for decades find themselves confronted with a common and unprecedented enemy. Sunni Muslim Saudi Arabia has long seen Iran, a, Shui a Shiite uh, Muslim nation, whose uh, government has sought dominance in the region as its mortal rival. But the two nations appear to be seeking to settle their differences. So what we're seeing for the sake of destroying ISIS or ISIL, Islamic nations that have been bitter enemies for decades, and frankly centuries, are coming together in one common goal to try to defeat this uh, terrorist Islamic uh, state. Now the question is, is could this uh, coalition to try to defeat, to defeat uh, 
uh, the Islamic State be the coalition or the peace with many that the Bible is talking about. Now remember that uh, the peace with many and the, with the covenant uh, that will be made strong by the Antichrist will not only include many but it will include Israel as well. So I guess the question is is that will the Arab and Islamic world put their differences uh, behind them and involve themselves in a coalition that would include Israel? So where does this uh, coalition, where is this going to take us? Well, that's simply hard to say. I don't know if it's eventually going to lead to a seven-year peace accord or uh, com confirmation of a covenant or whatever it's going to lead to. But if, in fact, they, the Arab world and the Islamic world can put their differences aside and uh, form a coalition with Israel, that in and of itself would be a feat that's never been done in the uh, modern era anyway of Israel's rebirth. So the question still has to be asked, are we looking at the emergence of a world coalition starting with the European nations and then including also Middle Eastern nations to try to uh, defeat this uh, Islamic State and to bury it once and for all? And will it, all, will it ultimately pave the way for a peace accord or a covenant uh, being made strong in which Israel would be at peace with many, including the uh, Arab world? Well, we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out, but it certainly looks like uh, there is a possibility that, that could be the case in the near future. So we need to keep an eye again on the, the situation and see how it plays out and to see what kind of coalition is brought together. And also we need to keep an eye on the fact that is uh, Abbas about ready to open his eyes up to the motives of the real Hamas and go back into peace talks with Israel. Well, we'll have to wait again. We'll have to wait and see how that works out. But this is just news that you need to keep your eyes on. But as I've said many times, I think the rapture of the church will be the next thing on God's calendar. Then there will be this accord that will be taken care of. And if you really believe that we are living in the last days, I would encourage you to get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. You can click in the left or the top left-hand corner um, and go to the area where. I am giving the book away for free. It's an ebook, but it's still free. If you want to uh, turn it into a paperback book, you can go down to the print shop, have it printed out, but it costs you about 10, 12 bucks or so. Uh, or you can click on uh, the link in the about section below and get a professionally uh, made book of the same, and that'll cost you somewhere around eight dollars. So you can do the math and see that it's probably cheaper if you want to get a copy uh, soft copy of it is better just to go ahead and just buy the soft copy and as always if you don't know the lord as savior you need to make that decision today your time is running out uh i you know um, there's too many people out in this world who are just fooling around with god who claim to know him but really have no relationship with him if you have not accepted jesus as savior you need to do so 150,000 people die every single day the vast majority of them will end up in a burning hell and that's because they don't know the lord as savior don't let that happen to you. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.